hello. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like this little setup. <laughs> but it's they said, and I'm back with the two fabulous ladies while Dustin is off to impress some girl. He's some, out to try to get some math. Let's call a, it what it is. At a coffee house. <laughs> huh. Interesting. So we wish you luck, Dustin. But I love the new little brass rail setup. Like they yeah. are bumping it up. Oh, yeah. These like fancy chairs. They're quite comfortable. They're backs. They're probably not easy to break. That's why they invested on them. <laughs> they know how you are on Sunday nights and Saturday, Saturday nights. Night. <laughs> like last night. Oh yeah. You got crazy. <laughs> cry cry. I know. Me and tequila don't mix well. It's weird because you're laughing. I know. I'm a Jägermeister kind of girl. Oh, this oh, is terrible. Oh god, right? And I just found out a friend of mine posted on Facebook, Joey Pena. The one who's in South Korea, because he went to a movie theater and their nacho combo comes with Jaeger. Nice. For a movie theater. And TJ, that- they have those. They have the uh, where you eat and then you can drink nachos the movie and theater. Jaeger. Nachos. It's How does the that combo. go hand in hand? It's a combo. It's South Korean. I don't know. They eat kimchi for God's sakes. They eat iguanas. Yes. <laughs> Do they really eat iguanas? <laughs> yeah. They're extinct they, in, 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 in Asia. They're extinct because they ate them all. I was just watching a documentary on it. They ate iguanas? Yeah. Wait, I wonder pause, what they taste like. Pause yeah. everything that you watched a documentary. Yes. <laughs> that, is the, that is the news. I know, because they, they were saying that in Puerto Rico, they're overpopulated with them. They're already making like a factory to export the meat and all that. And Asia is our biggest consumer. So they're going to export iguanas? Alive, and uh, maybe they're thinking about sending some over there so they can repopulate over there because they have them by the dozen, and they're causing like a lot of damage on their roads and uh, their trees and everything. They're going to send some iguanas over so they can populate. Repopulate Asia because apparently they don't mess China, the- to be precise. China? Yeah. <laughs> because they're, um, they ate all their iguanas. They don't have iguanas anymore. They're extinct over there. What's the weirdest food you've ever ate? I don't know. I'm, I don't like to play around. Uh, you know what? They um, kill an armadillo and then they kill a uh, wild pork in Mexico, so we ate that. Well, you, you, also, eat, you also eat cow stomach lining, too. So. I don't. I don't, for the, for the record. Really? My mom does, but I don't. Weirdest? Weirdest? Well, I like escargot. I don't know how weird that is because I really love escargot. Is that a weird food? That's snails. Weird. That's kind of like. It's weird when you think about it because they're snails. <laughs> People eat um, fish eggs. I love those. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love caviar. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> Whoa, oh, yeah. A little caviar and creme fraiche. Sign me up. What's creme fraiche? Creme fraiche? <laughs> it sounded a little weird. <laughs> It's it's like a whipped cream that's almost like a sour cream, a little oh. denser. You know, like that so, Philadelphia cheese. Similar. Yeah. I had at I went because every once in a while I go to the Hillcrest Farmers Market, mm-hmm. and they have this like a seafood kind of booth, and they have and like I'm the type of person where I'll go out. I learned this from a guy I dated. And like I'll try something weird on the menu that I've never had before. Yeah, I'm just I like do I don't know. Yeah, it's been a new thing in oh. the past year. So I'm at the farmers market and they have sea urchin. They make a sea Oh I love sea urchin. Oh. Oh, just live. <laughs> you eat it weird. live right out of there. You scoop That's the insides what... out and oh it's delicious. Oh, I didn't know you eat it like that. It's oh like I a love ceviche. it. I guess I've eaten a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. The, you, the live you shrimp. Said escargot? You know when you get a, a nice sushi place and they serve have you ever seen they'll serve shrimp that are still alive and their legs are still yes. moving? And be on top of the roll, like on the head of the roll, and be like, oh my God. <laughs> and then you eat them. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. How did you say escargot when you've eaten live shrimp with their little tentacles? I guess I eat a lot of weird stuff. Oh. It's because you're a like, wine person. I'm a wine person. A foodie. Yeah. yeah. How was your weekend? <laughs> your week? My, I've, had a, I've had such a busy week. My life is stressful. I need a break. I need you were a, just talking about going that, into... <laughs> yeah, I was like, just check me in the Betty Ford Clinic for a week. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. You did not say the Betty Ford Clinic. You said a spa. <laughs> I want a spa. <laughs> yeah. I do. I just want to go to a spa and hang out and have them feed me health food and do a little yoga and just have someone take care of my every need and not have a cell phone. 
Of course, then I would lose all my accounts and I'd be really stressed out. <laughs> Do you work a lot? Because you you are a wine distributor, right? I am. I um, but you know, it's a it's kind of a seven day a week job when you're in sales because people need you at all times. So when people work in restaurants, yeah. they don't have regular hours, so they'll call me. They'll call me at one in the morning. I don't have to answer, but I normally do. I'm normally up anyhow. And then you wake up to a bunch of emails, but you know, ultimately it's a fun job. I'm going up to Napa this weekend. Nice. So I'm going to visit some wineries and winemakers are going to get fucked up. Oh, totally. I'll get hammered. <laughs> the the winemakers are going to make us, you know, making us lunch and cruise around, get the royal treatment. It's, it's a lot of fun. Come anytime. It's going to be like last week's episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. It is. We have Did a. You see it? No. Oh. Okay. I don't have cable. I haven't seen it. We have a five bedroom house in Sonoma on a vineyard with a pool. Oh, my God. Come on up. I hate you. <laughs> I, I, I would love to go, but this weekend is the Nikki Awards. Oh, is this weekend? It's this Sunday. Oh. And you're not going to be there then. Oh, no, I won't be there. And you were nominated. Oh, I'm not going to win. I'm up against Laura Jean. I voted for her. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. <laughs> it's funny because I voted like, against myself numerous times, too. How do you feel about the Nikki Awards a lot? Oh, you know what? Speaking of that. Oh, well, you're not brought that up. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you watched last week's episode. I watched parts of it. <laughs> so we were talking about, like, I said that it was kind of exciting at first, but now it's like everybody in Hillcrest got nominated, but Julian and Dustin. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julian, I would vote for you. Thank you. Just being <laughs> cute. I would pay a hundred dollars to vote for you. Julian. Yeah, everybody in our audience would vote for you too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so anyhow, we were talking about um, how some some of the nominations came after the ceremony, you know? They did? That's what Aaron said last week. Not after the ceremony, but after they first said that they were out, right? No, after the ceremony. Oh, after the ceremony, yeah. they added more people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how does that work? So, I don't know. So anyhow, we talked about, you know, I think that it because it's on, uh, competing up against us, he noticed that the first name that came out of mine is my friend Isaac Sekeras, who's got um, BearRadio.com. He's got his Out of the Closet uh, show in there, and apparently some viewers said that we were bashing him on our show. And if you look at the show again, we just said some people were nominated afterwards, and that um, just you know to mention anyone, his name came up, and that was all that we said, you know. We didn't talk about it, and we didn't talk about his show or nothing. And like I said, I think it was because it's in our same category. It was more noticeable to Aaron, or it could have been to any of us, you know. And so wait, people watched our show. Yeah. <laughs> so what totally was the kidding. ceremony? Was it a ceremony just for the nominations? It was yeah. the nomination. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so anyhow, so somebody called my friend and told him, "Oh, you need to watch their show because." They're talking shit about you on the show and this and that. So he texted me right away and he goes, we need to talk. And I said, about what? Ooh. Ooh. And then he goes, well, I heard that you were talking on your radio. I said, on your show. And I said, look, why don't you just go and watch the show and then we'll talk. So he went and watched the show and he was like, oh my God, girl, I'm so sorry. You know, I was like furious because they had like told me that you guys were bashing me in my show and this and that. And, you know, I didn't even know about the nominations, how they how they're made or anything so I said no we just said your name because it was I guess we are in the same category so it's more noticeable to us and then he goes okay well they that's not what they told me they told me that you guys were bashing me and talking shit and this and that so for those viewers make sure that you get it right okay? so I guess that's how we get viewers right who do you uh, want to talk shit about but that's <laughs> kind of what I mean think about it. that's how like no matter what community you're in people love to talk shit yeah and you know that's a, although I'd like to point out I was not on the show last week so <laughs> <laughs> just saying Nikki I'm totally kidding I'm totally kidding me and the six other people in my categories <laughs> uh, um, but no it's just that's why I think people people love to do that gossip and they like to stir the pot and like start stuff but I don't, I don't know I don't you weren't talking shit that someone yeah. just brought up no. yeah but yeah, I'm saying some other, other people were yeah yeah no shit. somebody else told them like, that we were talking shit it's that it's that telephone game yeah. thing right. where it's like oh hey and it gets twisted twisted and twisted but luckily it's all on camera and it could be viewed so yeah but I mean at the same time it's kind of like if you look at it 
there are I mean I don't know what the whole process is on like how you know how many nominations you have to have to be on a ballot well, maybe they were like short a certain number but, I mean I still like it's nice to be recognized and yeah. I think even like for like I mean we know how it is like Aaron and all them put so much time into this so it's like people should get recognized for yeah this. we don't know the logistics of it we're glad yeah. to be on it. exactly oh. even I was though super you won't stoked. be there and you probably won't go so you are going. It's too damn expensive. I have to go. Doesn't he said she said have a table? Yeah, aren't they gonna pay for you? No. <laughs> no, I, I'm going. I yeah, I kind of like I have to like places like I'm going with Mar I'm gonna sit with martinis at the center. Like I have to go on because I work for the center, right. so it's kind of like, and they're beneficiary. So I'm excited for it. It'll be fun. It'll be fancy. It's nice to get a little like tie on. Uh, if I'm probably gonna wear something really really scandalous. So they can talk about it. <laughs> I'm gonna wear like that, you know, that green Jennifer Lopez dress. Oh, awesome! <laughs> you should totally sure. wear that. Girl. Be the star and of the make show. It in black and be like, okay. You go home with eight dates. Wear not black. Wear it in green. You yeah, need to wear black. that. No, you. Will you wear that if you come up to Napa with me sometime? That dress. Yeah. Where the hell are we going? <laughs> It's Napa, girl. Yeah. I mean, I want to have you wear it in Sonoma. Just Napa. <laughs> Just to take a stroll on the beach. <laughs> and your stilettos. <laughs> yes, I'm here for a wine tasting. I might go because my friend who's DJ uh, always when he's nominated too, and he's very excited about going. Who's that? Sebastian de la Madrid. He worked here, and then he works at Bourbon Street and Red Wing with me. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, you know, he's very excited. I told him, I said, well, it's expensive, but if you want to go, I'll go with you. I don't think it's that expensive, though. It's like... I heard it was over $100. Dollars. Was it? No. No, oh. it's 60 something dollars. Well, that's not It's dinner. Does it include drinks? It's dinner. Yeah, and it's at a nice... Because the table is like $600. Yeah, the table is. But you're not getting it there. You're just getting tickets. And the thing is, though, your tickets are... It's a fundraiser. So your tickets are going to organizations. I know, but uh, I don't know. I have a question for you about fundraisers. So I did a fundraiser last night at Splash Wine Bar, and it was we paired six wines with six small courses. We worked really hard on it, Twittered it, Facebooked it, she put it on her website, you know, and it was for the North Park Toyland Parade. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. So I guess it's the oldest parade in San Diego um, around Christmas time, and I think the money goes to Toys for Tots or something like that. But it's a... So we did this fundraiser for the North Park Toyland Parade, and we had the slimmest turnout. Really? Mm. How do you get how do you get people to come to things like that? Well, <laughs> and when I do stuff like that, I'm out every night promoting. Yeah. With the flyers. Yeah. Here I wasn't there. really promoting. And I I'm went on, on Facebook Twitter. Twenty four seven tagging yeah. hundred people and. You know. But that gets annoying though too. Like <clears throat> it does. It, it does get like yeah. when like people like will post on your wall like yeah. I now have to prove. But I can say like. Fundraising is hard. It is hard. And but <clears throat> like to rely on social media. Social media is a very powerful thing, but at the same time it's not a powerful thing. Yeah. But like you cannot guarantee your attendance based on like, you just Facebook. Can't. You yeah. can't do it. Like they you can't like them as and this is what I will do when I have my own restaurants. <laughs> But no, I mean they should have an email blast. Like, like they should have like all right. their customers on like yeah. an email because those are like their dedicated customers. Right. Because the brass you know, are busy place every usually. day. Yeah. But it's kind of one of those hit or miss things. Sometimes you do an yeah. event and a lot of people show up and hey. Like at a wine dinner, a Frank yeah. family wine dinner at Ruth's Chris and Del Mar, that wasn't a fundraiser. We had 70 people there, you know? Yeah. But this was actually for an event. It was really cool. It was six wines and six courses for $30. Oh my God. You can, it was awesome. And, and it was beautifully done. And you can, like, if you put out there, like, the. Like it's people got to relate to it. So if you're putting out there the organization that it benefits, and then you can get your media, yeah. you can get your media to back that up, and you know they'll promote it. And like if if Splash advertises with somebody, like they'll back it up. Yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of the game. You kind, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to get out there, but yeah, you know it's hard. Fundraiser, and it makes me whenever I do a fundraiser, I'm nervous as all. Yeah, because, because I'm like, oh my god, yeah. where is everybody? Where is everybody? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't my event. I mean, I was a sommelier, yeah. and I donated some wine to it, and nice. I just helped out with the. Event. Event. I just felt bad for the two promoters from the event where they were. They, they work for the yeah. They and they're like kind of two quiet little ladies 
they look like church ladies. And <laughs> it was their first bad. wine tasting. Like, oh, we've never been to a wine tasting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How does this Ooh, work? We've, we've never drank. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, they're like, woo, that's delicious. <laughs> Does the communion wine? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Um, Heaven uh, Sent did the desserts. They were delicious. Oh Have you ever been to Heaven God. Sent at Thirtieth and University? Yeah. If like you, like how much was it again? Thirty dollars. Super for it was for it was six wines. Okay. So you got you know like a pour like this, you know like a two and a half ounce pour, maybe a six little times. more. Six times. Six times. But actually, we did. We had a choice of two wines for the last course. But we since we had a low turnout, we just went ahead and poured all of them. So it was seven wines wow. and paired with seven little courses so there were two dessert courses then girl email me yeah. there and shit my friends and all that shit yeah, what? they'll show up there for that booze for that and like food and all $30, that dollars you know just the, the drink yeah that heaven sent like, dessert yeah. was so good so we had a sweet wine we had a chardonnay moscato paired with this cream puff filled with like a strawberry kiwi filling Ooh, and then yeah. there was a really rich ripe zinfandel paired with a deep chocolate That's cream puff two favorite oh so it was <laughs> Phenomenal. Hey. Wine and wine. Um, all right. No, seriously, let me know. Like, I've got plenty of drunk friends that would go to that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to jump in. We're going to jump into the pond. Oh, no. <laughs> With our water guns. <laughs> oh, shit. I know, is your, I know your big mouth, like, no, 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 no. we're back, <laughs> and we're jumping in the pond. <laughs> I'm so bummed that I missed this topic last week, so we're going to rehash it. Um, and I only watched part of, like, what Ophelia said, but I think I was kind of agreeing with her. The whole Lily Pond controversy, 2012, of Balboa Park. Um, so refresh my memory on your thoughts. <laughs> on my, I don't remember. <laughs> my thoughts. Well, um, I was talking about last week saying I had known about it. I never heard about this event before, but I guess it's gone on. I know it went on last year. Yeah, this was and the second. Last year it was at the main fountain, the fountain that's across the street from the Cactus and Rose Garden, the central fountain, which is all concrete. And I don't think anything happened. I think it was a fun event for people. And so they were promoting it this year. And I think just with the power of Twitter and Facebook, um, that the word really got out and so many people showed up. But for somehow or another, it got moved to the lily pond. So people were dipping their water guns in the lily pond and then some people got in and uh, it got out of control and they did $10,000 or more of damage to that beautiful lily pond. And I think that the thing is, is that it kind of turned into a witch hunt for to see who did what. and. My thoughts on it personally are that it was, became a giant event and so uh, just got out of hand. I don't think that anyone really went in with a malintent to destroy things, but ultimately things were destroyed and so my thought is, is that people that were involved somehow or another should chip in to do fundraisers to help out to repair the lily pond back to the way it was before this event happened. That would be my thought on it. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, I, like, that, oh, this really bothered me last week, because it was so, there was so much negativity going on about it all. Lots of talk. Like, it, lots of talk. Lots like, of talk. To where it's like, okay, it. enough, people, it's the lily pond, it'll grow, but, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that. Yeah. Um, but, I, because I got one of the original invites. Oh, you did? Where yes. did you get the invite from? On Facebook. So it was a Facebook event invite. It was a Facebook event invite. So maybe what I just said about doing a fundraiser <laughs> <Yeah>. on Facebook. <laughs> Scratch that because you get 2,000 people now. Um, yeah, well, they'll show up for that, right? right? <laughs> no, and I know last year they did it, and it was like 20 people. And the person who invited me this year, you know, like, the, the I think the, the host thing grew. But, the per like, who I was invited from... I honestly, when I saw the invite, it was a very, it was a small amount of people, and I looked at it, and some of my close friends looked at it, and we were like, oh my god, this is going to be a fun event in the sense of, mm -hmm. because the people that are coordinating it, that were coordinating it, are sober individuals, they don't drink, they don't do oh, really? drugs, oh. da -da -da. and I looked at it like, oh my god, this is going to be an event where it's not a normal bar thing, sure. it's something we can go outdoors, have fun. On a hot summer night. Yeah, and the original, the original invite, and I still think the final one said, 
meet at the the fountain in front of like the Museum of Man or something right, like that, sure. and that's what was on the invite. So apparently, well, the Museum of Man doesn't have a fountain. Well, whatever. The, the, yeah. The right. fountain they, that's they, by the main fountain. on yeah. Park yeah. Boulevard. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I guess everyone went there Natural and history. the fountain was empty. Oh, so that's what happened. They were working on the fountain. Or like the city found out about it and they and just they, turned off the yeah. fountain. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yes. Why not televisions? Oh. <laughs> I at least saw the Facebook <clears throat> part. So that was the thing with me. And I personally feel, um, one, I think the organizers have raised money because the type of people they are are really good people but, yeah. that actually good. do stuff for this community and if you look at them not only like my community but the, all the communities they've done a crap load for this like for San Diego so this was not done in like that hurtful intent mm -hmm. yeah. and I do I do feel though it got out of hand because social media took it over and you had drunk too many people students sure all, yeah. they took advantage but I mean you didn't also have any police security no Nobody showed up. They, to, they, you know, about they all knew the event was uh, going on. Um, I think they set it up for a disaster. Um, I guess now they're saying that it was more than nineteen thousand dollars in damage. So there's some political figure, right? There's some political guy running for something. Who, who's I'm so yeah, not political. There's, there's uh, two of the mayoral candidates. You have Bob Filler and Carl. One Tomorrow. of them's a gay guy, and his partner had something to do with invites for this event. Uh, well, no, it was ruled that he did not have anything to do with that. And Carl's partner, uh, one of his former employees. Uh, was one of the apparent was one of the apparent organizers. Oh, and they're just linking it all. Yeah, that's how they're linking. Well, then of course you have the mud singing because it's a political year. Well, it'll like be interesting to see how this all pans out. It'll be interesting to see how the community comes together to repair the lily pond, which I love. I love that lily pond. Yeah. I live by it. I love walking by it. If you go there at night, you can see all the buildings exactly upside down in there. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful part of our yeah. city. And it's apparently near completion. All the repairs. Um, they're planning new seasonal stuff, seasonal stuff, <laughs> um, and more than thirteen thousand dollars has been raised um, through the what is it called, the Balboa Park, uh, Friends of Balboa Park. That's what they're saying. But I will say this also: is that I know there was two different donation pots going on too. So I saw this on the news. So I think it's more than that. And like, I know people that I know that went to the event were saying friends of Balboa Park donate through them because it's a safe place to donate. Oh. So, I mean, whatever, it's getting fixed. I know the, drag, the drag Kings did an event. I think Erin, you said last night. Is it the Drag Kings did an event to raise money for the Lily Pond? I love that. And I love the Drag Kings. I really, I do. I love the drag kings. I think they're so fucking talented. Um, I do. <laughs> um, but do you think that the organizers should have like felonies? No, I don't. I don't think they should have felonies. I don't I think. think out of hand. I don't think as an organizer for an event that you're responsible for the people that are there. But I do think that as an organizer, you have a responsibility to do something for the community to make things too <clears throat> right I mean obviously you were there you started something do something to help yeah. but it's not your fault the actions of other people yeah I think that by giving a person a felony on something like this when the true intentions of it were a basic small community right. event that was different that was fun that was not surrounded by a bar um like, I think you give that person a felony, it will fuck up their entire life. So where should they do it next year if they wanted to have one? I mean, where, where could you do something like that? Yeah. The beach. The beach. Oh, You're yeah. Right. There's plenty the of water beach. there. So organizers, <laughs> next year do it at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so you could piss off there. I mean, do right? it at Black's <laughs> Beach. <laughs> Black's or get naked. The, naked water gun fight. Or get the... Uh, naked. <laughs> or get a, uh, the proper permits, even though we know that the city would not grant those proper permits, so... Because it's it got out of hand. I mean, that's what it did, and it sucks. But everyone's got to ruin the fun for everybody, you know. And then leads me into right now in the porn industry. There's a big syphilis outbreak. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? Everyone's got to ruin the fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Um, no, seriously. At least you can't get it from watching it. <laughs> <laughs> what? You can't. <laughs> Do they have lesbian porn? Yeah. 
Um, lesbian porn sucks. Not that I ever watch porn, but lesbian porn sucks. Really? Well, they have hot girls doing it. Because it's other. all straight girls that aren't yeah. lesbians. Yeah. Uh, it's for guys. So it's not really Les lesbian. Yeah, it's not, not really it's lesbian. Not for lesbians. Yeah. It's for guys. Because you can imagine like a couple bulldogs just be like, hey, you yeah. know. <laughs> Wait a minute, though. I feel like I was watching Cinemax or Showtime at night. <laughs> And they were doing, a, it was a documentary I watched were documentaries they, too, about porn. <laughs> and it was... A, um, you know, real sex doesn't count like a documentary. <laughs> I think that's what I was watching. I too, was like real sex. Um, but they had a, there was a lesbian porn company that were actually real lesbians. Real lesbians, wow. Yeah. I'd like to see There's it. this um, transgender the female to male that is very, very, very hot and masculine and everything. And he's female tattoo. to male? Yeah. Okay. And he's like very buff and hairy and all tattooed and big butch mustache and ball headed. And then I was watching it and he was with a tranny. I went to transsexual, like male to female. Oh, interesting. And so I was watching Wait, it. Wait, I'm going to process this real quick. I get so confused by all this. Okay, it's like on. a documentary. Yeah. Not a point. It's, it's that. Female to male and male to female. Yeah. So, okay. um, it was like, so I saw the, the top part, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, and so then like they aimed the camera down and the, the male to female is fucking the female to male. So I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> and I had to change the channel. <laughs> Wait a minute, you had to change the channel. I don't like watching tranny porn. Oh. I, I, I love gay porn, but tranny porn, yeah. Wait a minute, you like gay porn? Yeah. I think it's hot to have two guys fucking each other. Again, this is my whole, you know, I swear to God, every show I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting to me. Okay, so back to the topic. <laughs> So, <clears throat> there has been this big, uh, huge in Southern California, apparently this huge syphilis outbreak, and they're going to shut down porn in Southern California. Who are they? Who are they, the porn? Uh, the Los Angeles County Public Health Department confirmed that a small cluster of positive syphilis tests have happened. So, so that's like... Porn Central. It's like yeah. I think Nevada, if you're gonna do porn, gonna it should just, if you're gonna be a porn star, it should just come with antibiotics. <laughs> Here's your porn star kit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And it's, condoms. How come they don't use condoms in porn? Well, anymore? and that's that's the thing that they're proposing is now like they are gonna make it um, like they're fighting to actually a ballot measure to yeah. make it that you have to have condoms for porn. And, and then lesbian I, porn will be super boring because it'll be like, like dental. Right? How do you get I saw something <laughs> like that on the news a couple of months ago that they were saying that because they shoot like a movie every like week or something like that, and then um, they they get tested like. They said every two months. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Uh, but they said that um, they could shoot the movie and have like a, an STD and not know it. And because it takes like two or three days for them to have the symptoms, that's what they were saying. And they could have already like fucked like three or four people in that period. Oh, uh, that's true. Interesting. Yeah. But I can say this too, as a um, person that works in like uh, the uh, nonprofit kind of sector. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, like, I know right now, like, I heard a study from the county of San Diego that, like, gonorrhea, which is another STD, like, has now, there are antibiotics that will not fight gonorrhea anymore. So, like, there's a new strand of gonorrhea out. So, I mean, that's the scary thing about this all, and it kind of is, like, syphilis. I mean, it's the next, you know, gonorrhea. So, it's, like... I mean, I guess you gotta take precautions. No bear backing. Hello. You know, and it. I mean, exactly, and it goes with the whole. The U.S. Health Panel is uh, likely to make uh, HIV tests uh, routine in medical offices too. I read that. That's not so bad. That's great. Yeah. Do you? I don't. Producer Aaron. Producer Aaron. Well, it's that people think that getting tested automatically means HIV. It's, I think, because I, I think that, well, herpes and, and I guess it's things. different with, like, men, you know, because I'm assuming. I think it's easier for men to have safe sex than women. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, but is it easier? Because well, you could just put a condom on. Yeah, but ladder, I mean, right? women on women action. It doesn't seem like the risks of a STD are slimmer than it is with a guy on like a homosexual. I'm not sure about that. I mean, really? I think it it depends on. Uh, I've never had sex with on how you're time. playing the game. <laughs> well, this is how we do. It. Okay. <laughs> Educate me, oh wise one. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know. But do you even watch um, porn? Not nah, well. Uh, <laughs> that's a personal question. Go on, Amber. Well, hello. What are you yeah, asking? I do watch. I mean, I think there are ways to have. There are definitely ways to have safe sex. But when it gets down to the nitty gritty, uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, I don't think. Uh, as easy for women to have safe sex as men because a man, you can put a condom on. Yeah. A woman, like a dental dam, I, you know, yeah. How the hell are you going to sit her with? <laughs> yeah. Toys are awesome, yeah, yeah. So, they're, they are. Yeah. They are. So, there are definitely, there are definitely ways to have safe sex. Yeah. Huh. I, I think with guys. And it's not like if you're going to have a one night stand there and that you got some toys in your back pocket. Well, it's like, oh, just I happen I to I beg your pardon. <laughs> I, I happen to bring my magic wand with me. <laughs> We're assuming that you have a lady friend you're going over to visit has a selection. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, that's, that's a whole other like, thing. Yeah. Choose your size. <laughs> yeah. we, talk, we start with the porn industry. Though. And I think, though, with guys, though, it's kind of like everybody has gotten around that whole. Like, they'll protect themselves from, like, doing, like, unprotected, well, not even everybody, but unprotected sex that you can get, like, HIV, and they'll do everything else, and that's where you can get, like, gonorrhea, the number one cause of people getting it is from oral sex. I, I am so glad I work where I work. I feel like, I feel like I people, things. I feel like people aren't even really talking about HIV much anymore. Like, people used to that's talk exactly about it all the about. time, and I wonder if young people that's are even sad. as aware or Absolutely afraid not. of getting it or as protective to not get it as they used to be, because it used to be such a thing. You know, even porn used to have condoms. There were condoms in porn, but now you look at porn, there's not condoms. Not that well, I ever do. There is. But it, not no, as frequently. It, it went through, yeah, it went through its thing. It's like there was porn back in the day where it was unprotected. Harry. And then, <laughs> and then the whole HIV AIDS pandemic started breaking out. And then that's where like condoms were more used because everyone was scared. And now people are living and they're taking medications. So I don't and think it, people are scared of it now. No, yeah, and that. and like I I kind of feel like my generation. I mean, I'm in my mid 30s, and there, there's the generation before me that are the ones that lost like so many people from it, you know. And then like the meds started getting better. And then there's my generation where it seems like it was more of like when I was younger, it was kind of like it was kind of under control. You can live with this disease. But people were partying and so they would get infected and they're living with it. And then now you have the younger generation who are just kind of like, well, we're not going to die from it. So, you know, they'll find a cure. And I think that's where the whole the problem comes in. I think the lack of education right now on that generation is what sucks. And yeah. in all communities because the number one demographic right now are uh, black women in their 30s that are getting the new infections. And that's my soapbox. <laughs> so register for AIDS Walk, www.aidswalksd.org. Because, uh, yeah, it makes a difference. What? And we're going to take a break. <laughs> You kind of like, you look like, like you're a little like, like, pale like when you die. Like, did you hear about Judas? Oh, she does. <laughs> I was trying to do a segue, girl. <laughs> it was a bad segue, huh? <laughs> Are you Too trying to kill me? <laughs> really? Okay, shoot. Um, what were you saying? You were saying Junior Seau? His, um... Autopsy results came out today. Oh, what did they find out? Yeah. Um, there was no illegal drugs in him. He was just taking like some medications for his arthritis. Arthritis. And um, some sleeping pills he would take like normally, you know. But it wasn't like nothing illegal or like uh, controlled substances. So what was the actual overall? Did they say? Uh, like, they didn't say why he killed himself, but they just said. But he didn't kill. Was, I thought. Did he? Oh, he, he shot did, himself. Yeah. He did commit suicide. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah. Ah. A lot of it, they feel, is because many dangerous uh, football players that have been yeah. beaten up, basically, in, in games. 
Yeah. Brain trauma. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, brain it's brain trauma. trauma. And that's why he did not shoot himself in the head. That's why he shot himself in the chest. Uh, well, and I think maybe like financial too, because you notice right after, right off the bat, like they closed sales. The restaurant closed like immediately, like two weeks. I know. I would have thought. Well, I, you know, I would have thought that they should have kept it open. You know, it would have probably brought in more business for them. Yeah. Um, which is funny because I can't find the paper. But speaking of brains, <laughs> um, I read this study. This new uh, California doctor came out with this study. <laughs> <laughs> oh you heard me laughing over there it's earlier because I was like, this is ridiculous. I don't know what it is, but I can't wait. So he was saying that rather than researching the gay gene, like there's a gay gene that makes us all <laughs> gay, he says it lies in the brain. And he says that um, heterosexual men and lesbians have more of a dominant left brain and heterosexual women and gay men, which, mind you, the right side of the brain is the creative part, is the more dominant side of the brain. It's still a bullshit. So where do I stand? Huh. I think it's, you think it's <laughs> bullshit. I think it's bullshit because I don't make any sense to anyone anyhow. <laughs> Maybe I need my own category, but I'm kind of like a gay man lesbian. <laughs> you know? I love drag queens. Oh. I love the theater. But yeah, I'm totally a, a lesbian. As, 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 what an expected I'm kind of an in between. Yeah. 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 yeah and like, like to me, I can be submissive sometimes, and I can be very dominant <laughs> in, in all aspects, not just in sex. Oh, okay. You know, I can be like, okay, huh? I am too. I'd be like, fuck. I'm no, an equal you know? opportunity yeah. lover. I'm not exactly. a top or a bottom. I, I adjust myself. I'm to just good at I'm it. With. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think you're more dominant, and then you're just like, you just act another way when you're trying to be submissive. <laughs> when I, I'm We're, faking it, is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, completely, because we've heard about your fights and all that. You're the a fights. dominant person. Well, and you're also Latin. I'm an aggressive Maybe not, bitch. I'm not putting like... Oh, I know, I know. Everybody keeps saying, you know, Latin passion, fire, and bullshit. It's like everybody go kick ass if they get mad. So he's saying there's a gay gene. That no, he's saying that scientists need to stop looking for the gay gene, like the gene, like you know, blood and all that stuff. And it's in the brain. It's a brain thing. And I, I read it and I laughed because I was kind of like, really? Are you pointing out that heterosexual women and gay men are similar because they're both creative? That's how I looked at it. I was laughing because I'm like, oh, we all knew that. Right. Gay men, usually the stereotype is they're an artist or a designer or, you right. know what I mean? But just like anyone else, there's every side of the coin, right? So yeah, some gay men true. are flamboyant and some gay <laughs> men are like Aaron. <laughs> he's not flamboyant. Oh, he has his moments. Uh, yeah. But he's, not, he's not like, oh, girl, you know, uh, or... Yes, he has his moments. <laughs> yes, he does have his moments. I went, and it's funny, because I went on Saturday, went down to Qualcomm Stadium. Never been there before. And I, and I went for my first... <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, that, speaking of... that stadium thing? Yeah. yeah. I was like, how do I get there? <laughs> and, and then I went to meet my like sister, my brother-in-law, and one of my nephews, because they were there uh, for the Dallas Cowboy game mm -hmm. against the Chargers. And it was my brother-in-law's birthday. So I get there, just for the tailgate party, and I had never done one of those either. <laughs> and <laughs> I know, it's pretty sad. And I meet one of my sister's friends, and she cornered me and talked to me for like an hour and a half about being a gay man. And like all the things about, when did you know? Have you ever hooked up with a girl? Oh yeah, you always get those. <laughs> Does it drive you nuts yeah. now? And it's like, I, I, I'm pretty like straight for everyone. I was like, girl, you know what? Go and research all this shit on Google because I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's like one question leads to the other and the other and the other well, and you know. It goes on. It's and funny though. It all starts with how do you do your makeup, and then yeah. this, and then your hair, and then like boom, 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 and so like when we. You know I guess it? it's sweet when somebody wants to know your life story, but ultimately, at some point, I'm 41. Like I don't want to tell the fucking story anymore. Yeah. You know, it's like you know this way I'm now. Like you either like who I am or not. Like really, what led up to it? It's not that interesting. It's not. You yeah. know, like they want to hear like something bad happened yeah. to you or you were raped and that's yeah. you became this way. <laughs> really. <laughs> I feel like I were mean, you honored by it? Like an hour and a half? No, I wasn't honored. An hour and a half. Yeah, I wasn't really honored, but I felt the need to, like, the questions. And my sister, I can tell my sister was like, because my sister hadn't heard some of these answers about the first time I hooked up with a guy, and it was like one of my best friends. And I, yeah, my sister's mouth was like on the asphalt, going, "What the <laughs> fuck is happening?" And but I felt because the girl kept asking me these questions. 
I kind of felt like I'm like they're from probably conservative area, mm -hmm. and I could tell her husband was very standoffish with me, which is like how all their friends' husbands are. I've, I've fought with a couple of them, but I felt like I was kind of at that opportunity educating and being like, you know, it's not like I didn't. I'm not gonna hit on your husband, even though he was oh, hot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna hit on every straight guy I see. Well, it's really know. cool. They yeah, saw you're you a normal some guy. Some people assume that you know, just they because, completely yeah. yeah. They think it's just your because you're gay and you're gonna hit on them, and you know. And I, I've had arguments with guys where like, dude, you're not even that fucking hot. Trust me, I've had guys better than you, and you're not even that hot, you know. Because like in the Mexican culture, even I'm a transsexual, I'm still called a fag by them. So, you know, that's how people see it. It doesn't matter how many years you've had your boots up, how long your hair is, you still a fat. Even though they're attracted to you. Yeah. Interesting. So, that's how they, like, I start talking to her wives, you know, and then, like, I'm really like, I don't want your man, you know, just so you know, I don't like Mexicans to begin with, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, she was fabulous, but I think it's a matter of, like, in that sense, it's a matter of, like, when you have this opportunity, I mean, yeah, it got to a point where I was yeah. like, can I go talk to my brother-in-law? Yeah, nephew? I was like, hang on, see my family and be myself. But at the same time, like, it's like, you know. It's, it's fun for a while, but then, like, yeah. when it gets too long, it's like, uh, You can educate someone to at a point, her. but I think what educates them the most is just seeing you interact with your family and see that you're just like, like everyone else. Exactly. You know, I mean, I that you could take all that time to say, oh, this is my story or whatever, but ultimately, if they just see that you're just there to hang out and you're cooking hot dogs yeah. with them and just talking and you're they normal and you you're enjoying like to be around. They, they don't make a, a judgment of your persona yeah. as right. they see you interact. Because like a lot of the members, like my aunt, she's, uh, she married this guy that's got like a lot of family and they're like very narrow minded and um, they don't talk to me at first until they see me interact with my cousins, my mom, everybody. It's true. Right. And then they kind of warm up and then, you know. Right. It's, a, it's, it's an fun. icebreaker. It's kind of like yeah. people see yes. you interact and you're yeah. a normal fucking person. Yeah, right? they, you yeah. know, they see you as a person, yeah. not as an it. Yeah. Well, and that'll be the thing. The next time I go to like my sister's house for like a party or something, something and these people are there because they're kind of newer friends mm -hmm. I think that's how it'll be and I think it'll be more open up because my sisters like they love I'm very fun you know? yeah. What's yeah, not that would love? be my little brother Sean Johnson <laughs> 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 we talked about him too and how I'm the masculine one <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so we're gonna, on that, we're going to get a producer question, which is Amber. Which celebrity inspires you the most and why? Oh, Smiley because it's face. in light colors. Yeah. Which so which celebrity inspires you the most and why? Ooh, wow. Ian? I did not know. I read the question. Yeah. Alejandra? <laughs> I don't know. I have like a lot of um, celebrities that I really like. Most are Mexican, so it wouldn't be big deal saying it. But, um, yeah, that's Portuguese. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> we apologize, Brazilians. That's <laughs> uh, in Joe's. Um, I'm so I'm glad that you actually knew it was Portuguese. It is. I, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Girl, tonight I've learned you watch documentaries. <laughs> well, like, here's the thing. I don't have cable. I got very limited shows on my TV. That's so Netflix, channel. right? No, no, no. I, no? I don't have... I got this HD antenna yeah. that I hooked up, and I got, like, limited uh, shows and so channels, and I... It's late at night sometimes, and I'm bored, and I'm just flipping through shows. So the question was... <laughs> <laughs> just That's why I'm, I'm watching all this shit, you know? Documentaries anyhow, are good. back to our I question, love documentaries. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I get inspired by it a lot, but... I don't really get inspired. It's just like to me, it's just, I watch them and I want to impersonate them. You know, so it's kind of different. I don't. So your inspiration. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Though. So yeah. your insp you get the inspiration you gather from celebrities is their stage presence. Yeah. And you want to be there yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's good. Answer. Oh, I think that's it's great. It's kind of like. <laughs> so is there one in particular? I love this girl, Polina Rubio. Oh, I love her. I love her. Oh, Polina, aren't you Polina? known for being Polina? Pol yeah. I've never heard of Polina. I don't even know who Polina is. It's Who's just Polina? like, here's, I'll tell you the first time I ever saw her. <laughs> My friend Chavo Dominguez, uh, that worked at me and Martinis, brought me to Brass Rail one night and said, uh, and said, oh my god, this girl does this Paulina. Is it Paulina? Paulina. Really. He's like, oh my god, it's Paulina all over. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then I went there and I was like, oh my god, yeah. It's Paulina. <laughs> <laughs> but all the Latins were going crazy about her because she is a... Like, because a I like. really... I. It's not something that I think I look a lot... Like, even when I went to get my nose job, I put 
took pictures from every angle and I said, this is the nose I want. So he kind of did it. but he It said, is a beautiful nose. Thank you. He said, I still need a touch up to get it to the weight, but I'm okay with it right now. So, But I took the picture of her and I was like, I want my nose like this. And then like every hairstyle, everything she comes up with, I come up with it. So. That's awesome. Hmm. Well, that's pretty neat. I know. I like that. That's a good answer. Amber. I don't know if I have a current celebrity that... Uh, Dead or alive. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of dead celebrities, uh, but Steve Martin is one of my heroes. I, I love Steve Martin. I grew up with Steve Martin as a kid, and he got me through tough times. Uh, you know, I'd memorize all of his albums. I would just memorize the whole thing. I'd walk around and say, that's okay for me, because I am a wild and crazy kind of gal, and I used to walk around to school with the arrow <laughs> through my head, and my mom say, well, you can't wear that damn thing to school, you know, I'd say, yes, I can, you know, we get a fight, so I'd hide it, and as soon as I got out of the house, I'd put my arrow through my head, I wore it through school. I loved Steve Martin. I was obsessed with him, and I still am. I just, I loved all his movies, and now I'm his Facebook fan and his Twitter fan, and he actually responded to me on one, and it just made, made my whole whatever. I was just like, wow, Steve Martin responded to me. That's so cool that celebrities will actually respond yeah. to you on Twitter now. I'm going to have to get on Twitter more often. I, I actually fo I followed Paulina Ruby and I asked her oh. something about her song, and then she actually re responded to me. Yeah. Huh. Oh. I think we all have, like, wow, we all, like, all of our inspirations are kind of different. And, like, like, how we find inspiration oh. for them. Yeah. Um, I think mine are, like, I mean, how do I say like, there's ones that I can remember that stand out that I kind of looked at, like, and, like, this is going to sound so cliche, but I've looked at, like, Princess Di, because I was at that Loved her. I was at that age when I mm -hmm. saw, like, her philanthropy and all yeah. that, and Bono and what he did, and I think now and, like, currently, I kind of, I think I just look at, um, the celebrities, like, when I see a celebrity come out, you know, and take a stance, I think that's the ones that inspire me yeah. the most. I do love you Ellen. Know? I love Ellen. Yeah. I, I, mean, I just, I, look at I absolutely adore her. I, I mean, how could you not? Like, yeah. she, like, you know, it's, she came out She's in a great. different time, and, like, so I think that's my, my inspiration to, like, the celebrities that actually take a stand, fight the world, and are like, this is what is I guess he didn't get none. <laughs> And now Dustin's back for... <laughs> Dustin, come here. <laughs> uh, come here, Dustin. I guess you didn't get none. <laughs> <laughs> So Dustin is back for the uh, producer question. Uh, <laughs> what was the producer question. The producer question was, "What what is it? What celebrity inspires you? What celebrity inspires you? And don't tell us about your Lestat coffee date because that did not go well. <laughs> it, you you want to well, you want to be back? Yeah, it was, actually, yeah. it was really good. I just wanted to come back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what celebrity inspires you? What celebrity you? inspires me? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I don't know. Um, the ones that get laid a lot? <laughs> <laughs> I would say probably, like, I like athletes. Like, um, someone like like David Beckham or something like that, because he is someone who is an athlete who's way, like, he, he's older and he gets all this, like, talk from people saying he's not good and everything like that, and he just, like, goes past it, and at the same time, he put in so much work for, like, London to get the Olympics and everything like that, and he wasn't even a part of it, but he's willing to put in all that effort to do other things, like, and he's in so many different, like, yeah. inspiring commercials and stuff like that that you see, like, he's always in those, talking about, like, people ending racism and everything like that, like... He's always, like, taking pictures with people just randomly yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Exactly. He did, and he did fight to get the Olympics then. He was in the opening ceremony. Yeah, he was in the opening ceremony and everything like Interesting. that. Interesting. This is a good producer question because like, we just heard like all different types. Of things. Dustin, thank you for joining us for the last two minutes of the show. Get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> you smell like coffee. And we'll see you next week when we find out how your Nikki. We'll see you next. <laughs> just kidding. I'm totally kidding. All right, so that's it. Um, oh, events. I have a couple quick events to talk about. Uh, I want to ask you a question. Okay, and Richard, the manager. I I'm here, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
We are classy. <laughs> He's always getting you in trouble, girl. What's up? Okay, I'm gonna breeze through these events real quick. <laughs> Am I right? Um, okay. I didn't even hear what he asked. Uh, how was the fight last night? Oh. Alright, tomorrow, Tuesday, August 21st at 7.05 p.m. is out at the, the second at, out at the park for the summer. You can purchase tickets at ticketderby.com slash event slash out at the park. Um, then on ooh, Wednesday uh, is the first ever LGBT day at the Del Mar races. Oh, really? Yes. On Wednesday. On Wednesday from 2 to 8 p.m. It is not official. Oh, it's like gay day at Disneyland. It's not, not official. official. Um, he, here's, the, here's the kicker of the story. It's called Free and Easy Wednesdays at the Del Mar <laughs> races. So, Are you supposed to wear a certain color or anything? But, I don't know. But, but I do know that the Del Mar races they're reserving an area which I don't know oh. that's kind of weird that's but unofficially official yeah but unofficially official. yeah <laughs> so you can um, reserve your spot and you must reserve your spot at www.dmtc.com slash season slash diamond club dot php like a whatever. vault how do you um, <laughs> and then on ooh, I think it's Thursday I'm sorry I didn't write the day it's uh, 70s night at the Ruby Room which is a uh, a five dollar admission, which goes to the Latino Coalition for AIDS Service Providers, and there's a dance off at ten and a, uh, a dance off. That's cool. Yeah, and seventies theme is encouraged. That sounds like fun. And then the fabulous toast here, the Brass Rail, is doing a fundraiser. I'm really excited for on Saturday. Uh, which is called Fast Times at Brass Rail High. It's a fundraiser for Christie's Place, which if you don't know, is for women and children affected by HIV and AIDS. Um, just show up here and bring school supplies for the kids for back to school. It's at 9 p.m. It's free, and 80s theme is encouraged. And then on Sunday is a fabulous fundraiser at Martini's Above Fourth for AIDS Walk San Diego, uh, hosted by Anita Longhorn. It is a Tupperware sales party <laughs> where you can order Tupperware, and she's donating 20% of Tupperware and 20%, and Martini is donating 20% 20 20 of the booze sales um, to AIDS Walk, and that's at 1 p.m. And then great. Sunday night is the Nikki Awards. Good luck to all the nominees. Thank you. We, oh, <laughs> I love that you just said thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Sorry, <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you can guarantee we'll give you a full recap on Monday night because Aaron and I probably will be the only ones there. <laughs> I'll be there in spirit. I still have time to make my dress. Alejandra's going and she's going to be dressed like Jennifer Lopez. So make sure you go. Or Paulino Rubio. Yeah. I think you should really make that happen. It's been fabulous. Maybe we'll have Dustin back next week. If he Maybe doesn't get out. a second date. Can Anna, you make us all outfits for the show yeah. sometimes? Magic. Right? <laughs> Anna, we're Anna's straight girl. We're looking for a heterosexual girl, too. Yeah, yeah I saw her tonight. That'd be fun. But thank you for tuning in, guys. And, um... Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, my God.